You know, recently, I'm sure you've been watching the interviews of uh, Jeffrey Hinton, the kind of the godfather of AI who was at Google and now he's left Google, I think, so he can speak freely or do more to maybe talk about the dangers of AI. But he came out and said, it was too late for a letter like that. What, what is your response and was the letter effective? I mean, we're still talking about it. So as a PR event, I gotta take my hat off to you because that's what you want with something like that. So was the letter effective was it ever meant to get a pause or was it really meant to get more attention on this topic? My personal goal with the letter was actually to uh, mainstream the conversation on whether we should pause or not so that people felt comfortable having it. Because to be quite candid, many people I really respect in the field felt uncomfortable even suggesting it. It was almost like it was a taboo to suggest it because people might think you're some sort of weirdo luddite scaremonger or who doesn't understand ai right and having people like joshua bengio who shared the turing award with hinton right for pioneering deep learning signing it as signatory number one saying you know we should pause what it really did i felt was make everybody else feel comfortable joining the conversation whatever side they were on which is so the which is why we've had so much conversation you know since the letter that's to me step one the next step is to see okay where is that all going to go and but I, I think the reason we haven't seen a pause already and the reason there is a lot of in my opinion corner cutting on safety is not because the people lead, leading the companies building them are somehow not uh, concerned. In fact, you know, I've, even in the last month, I've spoken with Sam Altman from and Greg Brockman, who lead OpenAI. I've spoken with Demis Asabis from, from DeepMind. I've spoken with Dario Amade from Anthropic and so on. And the Connor Leahy from <clears throat> Conjecture. All of these people are quite idealistic. They really want to use AI to make the world better. And they're all very mindful of, of the risks. And I, I really take tip my hat to Sam Altman for having the courage to acknowledge this very publicly. You know, he he said even quite recently that the worst case scenario is um, lights out for all of us. And all of these people are have been conveying you know this could certainly cause human extinction just like the woolly mammoth went extinct when it had to deal with more intelligent online uh, uh, entities right the reason why we're still not paused i think is not because these are not good people and it's not because they're stupid and don't understand the risks it's because of what you referred to in the beginning they're moloch <laughs> the demon <laughs> that keeps pitting everybody against the, each other you know it's <clears throat> If one company tries to pause alone, the only thing that's going to happen is they're going to get outcompeted by other companies. And probably even before that happens, the CEO who ordered the pause gets fired, right? We This is not a new thing. Moloch, this, this uh, division demon, you might, you might, you might call him, is... Uh, so we know well throughout human history, if you have overfishing, for example, you know, so Canadian fishers collectively managed to make it so that there were suddenly 10, 10 times less cod to fish, you know. Why was that? Was it because the fishers were evil? No, of course not. But they all knew that if they didn't fish, everybody else was still going to keep fishing and they had to take care of their family. Economists call that one the tragedy of the commons. And economists and others have written books and books and papers and papers studying this a great like how sometimes you can put people in a situation that brings out the best in them you can also put people in situations that bring out the worst in them you put people into the hunger games reality or whatever you know moloch in action and um <clears throat> in, in other words all of these leaders of these companies they need help to change their incentive structure so everyone can pause together that's ultimately what the letter is about so if the public opinion if governments come in and say, hey, you folks need to become less like the Wild West and more like biotech, now everything changes to the better. Think about it. In biotech, right, suppose a company says, ah, we have this fantastic new vaccine. We're just going to start selling it in supermarkets 
before doing any safety testing. What do you think would happen? What do you think the government would have to say about that? Yeah, they'd shut them down. Yeah, and then the, if the company comes back and says, you government folks, this is so ridiculous, you government folks, you need to tell us how to make it safe. You need to tell us exactly what the government would be like, guys, go away. This is your responsibility to do the safety testing, to do the clinical trials and present the federal, the FDA here in the US with evidence that it's safe. And if you can't do that, well, go back and work harder. You know, uh, This is how we should obviously have it also in all other fields, including AI, where if you're putting out a system which has potential to create harm, then um, it should be the responsibility of the companies to demonstrate that it's safe. That would that would end that this race to the bottom. This 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 is the way we combat Moloch. This is the way companies now are really incentivized to all work on AI safety enough that they can demonstrate the safety, which again is doable. You know, it just takes a little bit of time. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public, and he's going to be talking about how this upcoming recession is going to be fast, it's going to be bloody, it's going to be nasty. But at the same time, he's going to show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now, we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim. Watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's going to happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. Hey, it's Brian Rose, founder of the DeFi Academy. I've told you my four-week crypto bootcamp is amazing, but don't take my word for it. This is what my students are saying. The DeFi Academy was an amazing experience for me. It took me totally out of my comfort zone. In this course, I was challenged. I was held accountable and pushed to do things that honestly weren't always easy. It's been phenomenal, and I can't believe uh, we're already up on our four weeks. It has flown by. Going through this DeFi accelerator, by far, was one of the best courses I've taken. You do this course, you really get into the nitty gritty of the activities that will make you comfortable with decentralized finance. Thank you so much to Brian and everyone at London Real and the DeFi Academy for even putting together an amazing course like this. Anybody else that wants to do it, please sign up. It is well worth the money.